As a society, sometimes we think we are witnessing evidences of the decline of human civilization. However, recently, as of this video in 2023, we are quite clearly being witness to signs that we are moving towards failure as a society. Uh, we have artificial intelligence creating art and writing poems and the real human beings working between 9 to 12 hours a day, sometimes more, underpaid. Many people like myself have the need to work on uh, two and three jobs. We are not living, <laughs> we live to survive. Half of the world population is starving, half has no access to toilets, homelessness is growing, and yet artificial intelligence is having a great time being creative, which is something that we humans should be doing more than anything else, because we have a real creative and imaginative spirit. Compared to this, today's subject doesn't seem that important. Nevertheless, I think it is something at least we pagans should talk about. Uh, so, well, <laughs> here we go. Hello, my dear friends, how is it going? I'm Ari Ferger, and today I'm going to have a little conversation with all of you concerning the emergence of neo-pagan temples and other religious spaces in our modern days. I'm not here to say if it is a good or a bad thing. In fact, I have not decided yet if it is totally favorable for us, contemporary pagans, because, well, um, there's certainly quite the positive aspects to it, but certainly also negative ones. So I would very much like to read your opinions on the matter in the comments, if you please, if you don't mind, of course. Uh, give me the pros and cons or simply why you think it is either a good idea or a bad idea. Express your arguments and I think it will be useful, quite useful for us to have different perspectives. Well, going straight to the point, uh, if you are a pagan, you have certainly noticed that in many places around the world, especially in Europe perhaps, uh, there have been several attempts to build modern-day pagan temples. Some projects have been quite successful. Uh, in my own country, we, we do have a few pagan temples, but a, an official one and, and a space in the open surrounded by nature, which is a center for Neo Druidry, and it is an official space. It is on the map of European official neo pagan temples. And someday I would like to take you there. Centro Druidic de Lusitania, Druidic Center of Lusitania. Uh, you certainly remember the, the very famous and successful project of the Icelandic Ausothru Association, as another example, Ausothru Felalik, Ausothru Felalik. Uh, the first pagan temple in that country in a thousand years. Well, uh, as I said here a couple of times, uh, from the part of many modern pagans, uh, there's been an unhealthy impulse of gatekeeping paganism and the several branches of paganism, uh, a, a disastrous elitism preventing people from engaging and participating in some Pagan groups preventing people from getting to know and, uh, and, and, and from satiating their curiosity. This has had a tremendous negative impact on us, pagans or modern pagans, because by setting up limitations and preventing the general access of those who want to engage in this, not only we prevent people be from becoming pagans, but this also leads to a rather hostile environment which further enhances the doubt, fear, and hatred for paganism. Even though paganism is on the rise, uh, we are still a minority and uh, there's no full recognition of our existence in society. For instance, uh, when it's that time to make the census, I think that's how it is called, <laughs> the survey of a population recording various details of the individuals that live in a society to better understand people's needs and the types of activities we have, etc. When it comes to the part of religion, uh, in most countries nowadays still, if you are of neither of those mainstream religions that appear on the list, and we are pagans, animists, etc., most of the time your only option is to check the box that says other. 
Without the recognition of our existence as pagan persons, it will be hard to express ourselves and have a um, certain positive impact both for us and others in society. The recognition of a people is important because it helps to include those people in society by creating the necessary information about such people to avoid more negative aspects of living in society that are caused by pure ignorance, misconceptions, misinformation and <laughs> stereotypes. In, in this way, uh, temples become important because it is the recognition of uh, faith, religion, a movement, um, inclusion of such a faith in a society as well, and it opens up the possibility to create more and better information about those who engage in such a faith, religion, worldview, spirituality, or belief systems. So, pagan temples do create recognition, and it helps in inclusion. That doesn't mean that it will stop others from trying to, yet again, create some sort of damage and destroy such places, uh, because that's that, that is still, unfortunately, a, a reality. But the official recognition of a religious movement minimizes such harmful outcomes. And in the long run, people get used to it, and there's more people engaging with us, curious people, people who want to change their views, people who seek something different and new in their lives. So it, it has those positive eff effects. And people start to find us, pagans. <laughs> Let's face it, you want to find Christians, what better place to find them if not in a church or in a very conservative political party? But where do we find pagans? Sometimes this is the very question and of the utmost importance uh, precisely for those who either want to become pagans, pagans <laughs> or are taking the first steps into paganism. I often get the question concerning the best books to learn about paganism and where to find pagan people. Concerning books, well, certainly, uh, there are good books about paganism, but I would argue that a book doesn't make someone a pagan, <laughs> or indeed it doesn't make someone more knowledgeable, kind, more engaged with the religious movement itself, or even fully understanding its implications, the responsibilities, and so on and so forth. Just look at all the religious texts of the mainstream religions and the several interpretations each one makes to better fit their own selfish desires. And throughout history, it has had more negative impacts than anything else. Besides, does a book really make people experience paganism for what it is? Such books are often the author's own interpretations, their own experiences, their own views, and we end up like everyone else of the mainstream religions, engaging in a religious idea through the eyes and mind of another and not actually experiencing it by ourselves but simply going along with the conceptions that have been stipulated and collectively been agreed upon. And in my opinion, that is not truly experiencing the divine and the supernatural and the beauty of life and the multi-diversity and the multi-existences of persons and spaces of the natural world that surrounds us all. Surely, we can read all the books we want, <laughs> But I don't think we will fully experience paganism from a book or from online conversations. In fact, I doubt that a temple will help people experiencing paganism because it just turns into another confined space where a group of people engage with each other. But often the creation of these groups and spaces only include people that are willing to agree and confirm the ideas of the group and often exclude any type of thought and activity the group sees as to be not of their interest. And so it becomes yet another organism that limits persons from experiencing paganism, and instead a temple ends up being an experience of the group without the opportunity for individual spiritual growth which is important not only for the individual itself but also for the group 
because new ideas, new experiences, conversations, exchange of ideas enrich the spiritual engagement and stimulates its comprehension, enhances the sensibility towards it, I think. I, I have said here a couple of times, each person does have their own experiences and their own perceptions of both the sensible reality and other realities that can only be felt and experienced by each individual. One of the great problems of a religious organization is that it often denies people's experiences with the divine and the supernatural because it doesn't fit into the collective and agreed upon idea of what th that religious organization has stipulated to be the true and real divine and supernatural. And when people's own spiritual experiences are denied, they feel like they are simply having dreams, hallucinations, the projections of deep wishes and desires that are turned into meaningless images within the religious organization or group they engage with because it is being shown and told so. And this destroys people's creativity and imagination. And we are naturally creative and imaginative beings. And that is quite healthy. Naturally and impulsively, we are engaging with our own perceptions of reality. We do have experiences of our own towards the divine and supernatural. We feel, we see, it is part of our consciousness and it is part of our own unique sensibility to things. So it is quite unhealthy when a religious organization denies people's own spiritual experiences just because it doesn't match the collective idea of what a spiritual experience should be like for that religious group. Religious organizations have the tendency to even gatekeep people's imagination and creativity. We have seen it quite a lot. I've spoken about this before on the video I've done concerning the importance of unverified personal gnosis. So, I fear that negative impact concerning the creation of pagan temples because it will eventually turn out to be more of the same. A pagan temple does have a present positive impact, surely, mostly because it helps in the recognition of a group. But we have to see far ahead. And in the long run, there's always the tendency to become more of the same. And I personally don't think a temple will truly help people experiencing paganism, unless, of course, obviously, the temple and the organization perhaps are, uh, the organization behind it, perhaps are willing to promote conversations that allow people to share their own unverified personal gnosis, UPG, uh, that may serve to enrich the spiritual experience of paganism within those spaces. But my opinion here may be biased, of course, because uh, my own path is more inclined to animism, as much as it is possible under the circumstances of my own personal reality, of course. And I see that perhaps a better engagement with the spiritual is better experienced by being in contact with the world that surrounds us and, and its peoples and with and and its persons as well. <laughs> and it is fundamental to have an experience on an individual level and then exchange experiencing with experience with others and be willing to listen to other people's expressions as well, obviously. I fear the institutionalization of pagan beliefs. I think that is a big problem, which we have seen or we have been noticing from time to time quite a lot, and it seems to be growing and it should be addressed among us pagans. Creating pagan temples will once again progressively make people distance themselves from the outdoors, from the natural world, preventing people from engaging with the earth and its persons. <laughs> because eventually there's the, this idea coming forth again that the divine can only be experienced within the building that has been made to support it and to hold religious activity towards the divine, supervised by a group that performs and speaks for the divine. I think paganism cannot be disassociated from nature and natural environments. 
the contact with nature and its realities and peoples and persons <laughs> is fundamental for human growth, but also for the growth and to augment the chances of success and thriving of a human society. Being in contact with the natural world promotes awareness of the problems that exist and the damage inflicted upon our home and our very existence as beings of this world. Consequently, it promotes environmental activism. And I don't think paganism can be disassociated from environmental activism and human rights, especially the rights of indigenous peoples, which are the rights of the land and the right for life to exist. Protecting the environment and life will create respect and as such, all peoples, including pagans, will be far more tolerated and accepted. But we can't just speak of rights. Uh, we also have to be aware of our duties as a as living species of this planet. We pagans have to go out there and be very much active in environmental issues because this is our home, this is our planet, and we have to protect it. We must also create awareness, and this will avoid many future intolerance and persecution for all. However, and, and, and uh, as I was saying, I fear the institutionalization of paganism, not only for the reasons already present here, but also I must say that indeed within neo-paganism itself, the institutionalization of pagan beliefs turns out to be a big problem, uh, in my view at least. Um, there's been a tremendous amount of neo-pagan religious organizations, many of which are not pagan per se, in essence they are not, only in name or designation. Many neo-pagan religious institutions who preach intolerance and several outdated harmful traditions, creating quite a lot of limitations concerning knowledge and awareness of neo-pagan beliefs. This is even leading thousands of neo-pagans to ab abandon paganism because of such institutions and organizations who give a very bad name and reputation to paganism itself. Those who are not pagan will think or will perceive such neo-pagan organizations that such neo-pagan organizations re reflect pagan beliefs and will thus back away even more from it, which is understandable. Institutionalization of pagan beliefs leads both neo-pagans and non-pagans to become wary and very much weary, forcing them to back away or abandon paganism. Neo-pagans also must fight against such groups and religious institutions and organizations if we strive to maintain a healthy coexistence between pagans and non-pagans, and among <laughs> pagans. And pagan temples are the institutionalization of a particular pagan branch. It is often, not always, mind you, but <laughs> quite often, political expressions rather than a spiritual one. The need of a group to force their own views onto others. And temples work as a wonderful mechanism of political propaganda. So it is just more of the same. Institutionalization of paganism is the death of paganism. But at the same time, if there isn't a strong religious organization, officially recognized and with its roots firmly planted within society, it won't last either. So it becomes sort of a paradox. But the institutionalization of paganism will only secure the survival of a pagan idea, a conception, and not the essence of it, not what paganism is truly about. It just becomes more of the same. And it, it is forgotten, its true spirit, because paganism isn't within a confined space, but all around in the wild world. So what we truly want, the survival of paganism within society, but knowing full well that we, it, it will only be the survival of a conception, or do we want the survival of paganism as it truly is? but bearing the consequences that it may never be fully accepted within society as it truly is. For now, I don't think we can have both ways. Paganism as it truly is, and be fully accepted within society, it seems to me to be a beautiful romantic idealism. It's not impossible, of course, but it is something that will take a lot of time, patience, and a lot of conversations, 
and means through which we are recognized. And the sooner we do this, the better. This doesn't mean that we have to stay in the shadows, good gods, no. Temples are a good way to have recognition. But there are certainly, surely, other methods that will not compromise the future of paganism itself. It's better to live free, to live and die free, than to have a slow death day by day until all hope has faded. But mind you that I do understand the importance of temples, or at least of places where we pagans can gather. It's, it's the same importance of any other place where sort of like-minded people can get together you know, or gather around and share their thoughts or have a common view, a goal, a wish, and, and it is good and healthy to gather around and have the, the feeling of belonging. But like-minded places often have the tendency to stagnate and become quite limiting and turning into an organization for the same people, not allowing new ideas, new peoples, new creative and imaginative interactions and experiences and expressions and activities. I think paganism is better appreciated and experienced outdoors. That's it. But of course, uh, I speak from a privileged point. Here in Europe, in, in any country, we still have access to the ancient places of pagan worship. We live surrounded by the very land our ancestors have developed contact with the local deities and other beings. We who were born here and our families have been born here and thousands of, ge of generations of people that have been born in the same spot, we are indeed privileged and sometimes we do not give the proper value to it, to that reality. We grow up with the stories, the myths, the folklore. We live it. It's part of us. So from this point, yes, indeed, it is easy or at the very least less hard to experience paganism in the open, among the trees and the, in, in the mountains, in the forests, in the rivers and in the ancient sacred sites. We know the legends, the myths, the folklore, the traditional folk magic. We get to build an intimate relationship with the land. So I do get the importance of temples or other religious gathering places for those who do not have this privilege. Uh, I get it only from imagining it, not by experience. I understand that people who have been born in places where their ancestors are not originally from and have to build something new from scratch feel perhaps more at a loss without something to hold on to because the story of their ancestors is not printed in the natural surroundings as we in Europe have for hundreds of thousands of years. So for such people, it is important a space of gathering to try to find themselves and to spiritually grow. And I can only imagine what indigenous peoples feel like by being robbed of their ancestral home and customs and traditions, language, being in the very land of their ancestors, but yet their ancient sacred sites having either been destroyed or they do not have access to them as they would wish. I can only imagine and I feel you. And my heart will always go out to such peoples and I wish to always help as much as possible within my own power and resources. I cannot imagine what would look like or feel like if, if we here would be robbed of our sacred spaces, the burial mounds, standing stones, temples, all the artifacts and, and ideas, myths, folklore, vocabulary, dialects, our ancestors have left us. So you see, temples are useful in such a way as well. <laughs> but at the same time, isn't being closed within a building quite limiting? Shouldn't we be able to either be in contact with the land or create new relationships with the land itself? I, I don't think that being in contact with the old sacred places in the original spots is the only way to be pagan or animist or whatever. I think the important step is in fact to build intimate relationships with the land wherever we are. Get to know the local folklore, the myths, the history, the cultures the, and the suffering, the joy, the struggles getting to know and build intimacy with the persons of the land, be those human, animals, or other than human. 
we don't have to necessarily raise more standing stones and build temples, but instead to be in close contact and create symbiotic relationships with the land that is right there open to us. But again, this may indeed be a biased view from an animistic perspective and from the, the privilege I have to literally walk out the door and stumble upon several ancient sacred sites. But you know, <laughs> my most intense spiritual experiences were actually not at ancient sacred sites and structures, but out there in the wilds, completely surrounded by nature and in dangerous circumstances. But that's because I'm often a menace to myself because I don't fully measure the consequences. And frankly, I don't care. I don't care about my own safety. Anyway, you know, our pagan ancestors didn't just experience the spiritual and didn't just had to make some sort of religious practice within temples. They did it in their own homes as well, in the confinement of their private environment. But also, and this is where I sort of want to get now, they did it in shrines. I think that from an animistic practice would certainly be healthier for us pagans getting to move into several places and have a spot of worship, offerings, practice, ritual, some sort of activity towards the supernatural to experience the spiritual. Shrines are also good places of gathering and even living, offerings, messages, objects to other fellow pagans and create contact with both land and peoples. Doesn't take as much space as a temple and as much money, surely. But the best point here, in my opinion, of course, is that there is no religious organization, no institutionalization of belief, neither an elite group nor the need to specifically have a certain conduct in order to belong. No administration of the sacred space. It is a space of the people and for the people. If it is taken care of, by the people, of course, by, by the pagans who interact with space and persons. You go there and light a candle, another person leaves a biscuit, something. No one is specifically there to organize it, rule over it, administrate, control it, or limit general access to it. Although shrines would only work for responsible pagans, obviously, having in mind that it is a space for all. Therefore, it must be maintained so that the other may also have the same interactions and experience and, and access with that space as we do. It requires thinking of the other, putting ourselves in other people's shoes. And in that way, I also think it is a good exercise to start establishing empathy, building respect for the other, taking the, the other into consideration and respectfully use these places knowing that it, it is for us, but it is not ours. It is for all, and all have access to it. Another romantic idealism? Perhaps. <laughs> Pagan temples have other positive factors to add, of course, aside from recognition of paganism and pagans and places where the curious may go and learn and get involved. It is also a good place for meeting other pagan persons. And I know there are several gatherings throughout the year, be those to create or create or recreate or celebrate the yearly pagan festivities or simply gathering to share information, special events, to lecture, etc. But sometimes that isn't enough. And I understand people don't want to wait several months to gather around for a particular celebration of the year or waiting for everybody to agree on a date for a meeting and would rather like to go to a place on, on their own, to be active in their pagan life, even if it's just symbolically. I, must, I myself wouldn't mind going into a modern pagan temple from time to time. It's not my thing. In fact, I've been into religious structures either to visit as a tourist or working on excavations within such religious buildings as an archeologist. Even before I was pagan, I've only been to churches half a dozen times. And it was never for personal or collective religious spiritual purpose, but to go to three or four weddings of family members or to visit a friend of mine who left our black metal band to become a priest. True story. 
However, a pagan temple provides legitimacy concerning both paganism and pagans and provides sort of symbolic sense of protection, a welcoming place for the pagan individual, a way to express a kind of religious devotion in moments of the year that it's not specifically holy days and the person just wants to go there and be part of it more often than usual. But perhaps it is important to pose this question. What is a temple? It seems there is this necessity from the part of modern day pagans to have a temple as a structure that is seen as both a space of worship and a gathering place for the pagan community. But doesn't that sound like the same thing as a church? I may be wrong, of course, but it seems to me that there is this tendency to pick the most mainstream models of religious expressions and bring them into neo-paganism, which has happened several times before in the past 100 years. The very first attempt to make neo-pagan religions and organizations and movements in the first 70 or 80 years, there isn't one single branch of neo-paganism that hasn't been constructed by imitating Christian religious models or Judeo-Christian or, or even Islamic models. When most of them just feel like Christianity or Abrahamic beliefs all over again, but with a new label, that's because they are. So as pagans, shouldn't we pass beyond that? Many of us are trying and indeed there are new pagan religious organizations and groups and several individuals that are indeed trying to recreate spaces and expressions towards the holy and the supernatural through the study of archaeological findings, um, historical literary sources and through anthropology. But it's never enough because unfortunately much has been lost. So it is pretty hard to make faithful reconstructions and instead there, there's obviously the tendency to choose existing models that people are more familiar with and adapt them to new realities to fill in the gaps. There are quite a lot of gaps. Again, I think this leads us again to the concept of shrines. I'm really not making this on, on purpose as if what I truly want is to reintroduce the concept of shrines. It's just that every time I think about pagan temples or modern pagan temples, I do see the benefits in the present situation, but it always seems doomed to failure in the long run. And it would be safer and more productive for pagans having shrines. Looking back at several pagan spaces of worship, surely some of them were temples, but they were not particularly free to access. And the group always presiding over the religious. More often than not, the religious authority was the aristocracy controlling and holding the religious ceremonies to the subjects. The great majority of the population would have specific shrines in their own domestic environment or in their private spaces within a property or shrines and little altars and figurines throughout the cities or settlements they inhabited. Speaking of, which, of <laughs> ancient Western pre-Christian religions and belief systems, right? Temples existed nonetheless, but the general population either did not have access to it or wasn't allowed personali personalization of belief, meaning an individual wanted to express something towards their own notions of the holy and the supernatural, or according to their own experiences, and they couldn't do it at temples, because temples not only were presided over by an elite, but also because temples mostly served as a social organism to reinforce the power of the elite over the subjects. And, and if we think about modern times, as we should, because none of us is turning back and the way is always forward, there's a great amount of spiritual and religious personalization within neo-paganism, along with several ritualistic innovations. So a pagan temple seems to be more of the same and prevent personalization of beliefs and prevent innovation, creativity and imagination, which is important to open up the mind 
to different realities and explore such realities. And important are, these are important factors for the spiritual growth of individuals. It's like playing video games. No other example comes to mind now. What is more important? The mechanism you use to play video games, be that computer, PlayStation, or smartphone, or whatever else, <laughs> or isn't it the most important thing to simply have fun playing a game, regardless of device? Aren't we meant for spiritual growth? Perhaps the need to have a temple is simply due to being accustomed to a social reality where the human individual has a, a schedule in its everyday life of waking up at those specific hours, work the, the stipulated and mandatory hours, go back home, eat, sleep, and do it all over again. The need for a pagan temple may just be an impulse to create another system that fits into the post-industrial reality of the working system. That need to have specific fixed places and time for everything. It seems to me that shrines would <laughs> serve a better purpose, both to provide free general access and be there at all times for anyone to express their own creative and personalized means of worship or ritual, whatever. And oh yes, because let us not forget that pagan temples, like any temple or any other religious structure, will end up asking for money from their congregation. Many neo-pagan temples and religious organizations are already doing this. You need to pay to express devotion towards the holy. And somehow that feels perfectly normal because most people are used to pay for everything, for every service and worship somehow or any expression towards the divine and the supernatural has become another service. As if the gods are like vending machines, you put a coin and you, you get what you want. Frankly, it's ridiculous and more of the same. I think we pagans would benefit with something directed to the public to freely use whenever people wished and express ourselves in our own ways without having to follow the rules of a group that presides over and controls the religious space. Even statues have more beneficial aspects than a temple. Statues, little figurines, totems, shrines, altars, a standing stone, the, the beautiful artistic creations of modern day pagan artists that can also expose their works based on spiritual experience that can also contribute for the pagan public to actively engage with the divine and the supernatural through such works that can have the same function as shrines, statues, carved poles, etc. The benefits of a pagan temple don't seem to last that much and we will end up gatekeeping paganism itself at some point. Paganism is out there with the community and for the community and not just the community of living human persons. I think the immediate perceivable disadvantage of shrines, altars, statues and other public structures and places is that they aren't safe from vandalism, surely, but neither are the actual historical ruins of ancient pagan sacred sites and megalithic structures and cave paintings and rock carvings. From time to time they are vandalized, unfortunately. Still nowadays in, in, in Europe this happens. However, public pagan spaces like the ones mentioned before, help in the normalization of behavior and eventually acceptance of pagans. It actively contributes towards the integration of pagans in society as soon as it is normalized by the current behaviors right there in the open for everyone to see without nothing to hide, without anything to hide. And it is something for, far more inclusive, unlike a temple which always seems to be a structure that promotes the vision of persons and further distancing persons from the wider community of life, creating pockets of isolated groups here and there. And again, I think these public spaces would be great to encourage pagans to be more responsible, not just in terms of thinking about other pagans, 
that also would like to use such spaces, but also in terms of whatever offerings are given, eventually the, the places have to be taken care of, cleaned, arranged, maintained. And that would be the responsibility of the pagans themselves, which would be a good example to observe so others, non-pagan especially, may also adopt such responsibilities and less prone to commit vandalism on such spaces. Just as the same way a pagan person may express itself towards the supernatural and divine through a stone, tree, river or lake or anything else that occurs naturally and belongs to nature and would take care of the place, the natural place, be cautious that it should not leave garbage of any sort and avoid disturbing the area as much as possible and leave the space as they have found them, this same mindset should be transported to the artificial public spaces of worship. <laughs> let me know what you think of this, give more ideas, let us wait on the pros and cons and try to find other means to not only be a more active community, but also to normalize and give legitimacy to paganism and have pagans officially included in society. Because pagan ideas, especially when it comes to environmental issues and the issues of minorities, are worth listening to, to create a better community, or at the very least to minimize as much harm and damage as possible to the wider community of life and make this world a more habitable space for all persons. So I think it is important for the pagan person to be more active in society. Anyway, I hope this video was useful in some way and uh, I hope you have enjoyed it. Thank you so much for watching, see you on the next video and as always, thank you for today. Until we meet again, my dear friends.